So I know we've dug deep into NBA um, and there's just so much going on, but I do want to touch on NFL real quick before we wrap up. So we know that the fight for social injustice and just the reform has been something that blackboard Kaepernick, blackballed Kaepernick rather. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about teams signing him, um, which I don't know how accurate that is because I've also seen reports that, you know, not much has changed. Um, as far as his relationship with the NFL, we watched a whole press conference where his name was not mentioned in the apology, but we know it's about Kaepernick. So, I mean, how do you guys even feel, Scoop, I'll ask you, I mean, if the team wanted to sign him, if you're Kaepernick, like, what's your energy right now? Like, do you play for the NFL or do you think that's going to even happen? Um, well, I, I know Warren Moon, uh, a legendary NFL quarterback, was recently on Fox Sports with uh, Kelsey Nicole Nelson and and you know, he said a lot of owners have, 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 have emphasized the fact that, um, you know, if your focus is on social justice, how can you be the quarterback of the team? Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's, that's their prerogative, you know, if, if, if you know, they, they pay the bills or cut the checks in that regard. So, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's been discussion about, you know, certain teams like we have every year. You know, this year it seems that the team that the people are discussing is the Seattle Seahawks is a potential backup quarterback. Um, so it, I think it's going to be something that is going to be continued a conversation. It seems as though with everything going on right now, some of the things that, you know, he took a knee for or yeah. the attention was about police brutality is now, you know, revealing itself in time that that's what he was discussing. And, you know, people are now seeing it because they got time to sit and research it. So what's interesting, though, about that comment that you just said is, you have players that this is their everyday reality. You have players like Darius Leonard, who just experienced being racially profiled in Chipotle, who is a linebacker, who is a black male at the end of the day. When you take that uniform off and you're driving home, you're still a black male. So, um, you know, even that statement is just kind of, sh- it's, it's from a place of privilege, I think, because you can't put away being a black man when you're out of practice. So he's in Chipotle uh, recently, and that happened. And the Chipotle manager asked him to leave, saying that he was, you know, being belligerent or cursing out a a white man that was there. Um, And those that were in the Chipotle didn't witness that happening. And he basically went on Twitter and spoke like, look, this is the reality. This is what happens to being Black in America. You can't even eat in Chipotle without being harassed. So, you know, it's it's easy for franchises to separate the two, but it's, it's just, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to see if they actually do offer Kaepernick. I don't think it's going to happen just because that's really them coming to terms with, hey, we're wrong. And I think the pride of the NFL, they couldn't even apologize to him by name. I don't see them actually saying, hey, we were wrong. You were blackballed. Come back. I want to jump in real quick. So um, in regards to Darius Leonard, because I'm a Colts fan, I know his his background, as you mentioned, and, and, and you're right. With, with all the issues and obstacles that we're still facing as a society. Um, this wasn't Darius Leonard's first time encountering um, this blatant of, of racism. Um, his wife is, is white. They have an interracial child together. And mm. he has even said that during their dating phase in late high school, they had to hide their relationship for that wow. reason. Because he, he grew up in the South and he went to South Carolina State. And there were those that weren't ready to accept that type of relationship. And he yeah. talked about knowing that she was the woman for him because she was with him when his uh, brother had passed away and how that built their bond. But it's unfortunate that in this day and age, here we are 2020, you can't even order food without having to experience this level of racism. Um, right. In regards to Kaepernick, as, as Scoop highlighted earlier, the NFL may not actually start up until October. They've already canceled their Hall of Fame game. It looks like they're going to push back their preseason. If I'm Kaepernick, I'm not signing for anything less than a two-year deal. Because if I sign a one-year deal, you're going to sit me on your bench, you're never going to play me, and then you'll wipe your hands at me and make it seem as if, hey, I gave him a shot and it didn't work out. So if I'm Kaepernick, you've got to give me a two-year deal. You've got to give me an opportunity to actually show you what I can do so that if I'm not your starting quarterback, I can position myself to be someone else's starting quarterback. Um, so I, that's how I feel about Kaepernick, as I've always said, and I, and I stand on this. If you're going to give Kaepernick a shot, give him a legitimate shot. Don't just right. bring him in to pacify the masses and, and, and pacify everyone and say, hey, look, we brought him in and he, he just didn't work out. 
Give them right. a legitimate shot. So to sign him to a one-year deal now, knowing that you're not going to get a full training camp and he's not going to get an opportunity to really understand your offense would be an injustice to yeah. him as an athlete. Bring him set in on a two-year deal. To set up for failure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Set him up for failure. So bring him in on a two-year deal. Give him an opportunity to not only learn your offense, but show you he understands and can execute your offense. And then we see where he stands at that point. Yeah, I definitely agree, Eric. Um, I, I was saying before the show, like I, like, I want him to be signed, but I want him to really come in there and play ball because, you know, he. I want him to just show the world that, yeah, I was still good enough to play in this league. Um, I mean, probably was still better than I would say – half because he's probably somewhere in the middle of the pack when he when he got um when he when he first uh started to kneel so he's probably still in the middle of the pack right so he could definitely play in this league so i, I want to see him play um but again i do want to see him actually have an opportunity to play and eric you know the two-year thing is definitely the way to go because uh, you know one of the teams a team like seattle which they were talking about he may not ever get to play if he signs right. to seattle because russell wilson is there Russell Wilson rarely gets hurt, so it could be a situation like that. So I do want him to actually have a legit uh, chance at playing. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants, Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. 